Welcome back, my fellow poets, to another Spooky Saturday video. To those of you who stumble across my content for the first time, I am your narrator, Paranormal Poet, and I narrate true paranormal scary stories who focuses more on atmosphere rather than visual aid to terrify you. So sit back, relax, and step into the world of the unknown. Here's something I need you to imagine. You're out with your friends for a fun night, and one of your friends turns to the whole group and suggests doing some urbexing and that he knows an abandoned place close by that you're going to go explore. Since all of you are adrenaline junkies, you all agree. Upon making it to the abandoned place, you notice something strange. A light in one of the windows. First it flashes by, then it gets bigger. Well, it's only getting bigger because it's heading right towards the window. Everyone stares up, amazed and smiling. But you? You're terrified for some odd reason. Then they all realize, those aren't lights. Those are eyes. Now they're looking at all of you. Your group panics and guns the engine out of there. Tonight, I will read you two terrifying paranormal encounters that left the ones who experienced it chilled to the bone. Let's get into it. Story 1 Hello, paranormal poet. My name is Abby, and I've been eager to share this story with someone who would present it with an open mind. So I decided on you who should tell my story. This experience has me pretty traumatized. Even now, as I write this, I'm getting chills. It all started in September of 2017. At the time, I was just a normal little kid. On this day, I spent most of the afternoon outside, mainly playing with my dolls with my cousin. The weather was bright, and honestly, a fair day. We would usually play until it got dark, then we would go inside for some dinner. This time was different. See, there was a house next door that was abandoned as all hell. I don't remember a time where I ever saw a car there. It was just dilapidated and falling apart. But yet, it was still standing. I somehow convinced my cousin that we should investigate this abandoned house. So we waited for the perfect moment to go across the street. From the time I stood in front of the house, it was dark out already. If we want to explore, we have to do it quickly. I gathered what courage I could and walked, with feet now touching the driveway. That's when this strange feeling began emanating from the house. It made it feel heavy. I was struggling to breathe at this time the longer I stood there. I had to move and figured I would move forward. The front had a regular window, and when that came into view, I saw it. A pair of red eyes slowly emerged from the darkness within the house. My cousin and I both were paralyzed with intense fear. It was so unnatural how the eyes moved, as if it was connected to something intelligent. Then, in a chilling fashion, it looks over at us with its eyes getting bigger as it was now walking towards us. This snapped me out of my trance, so I quickly grabbed my cousin's arm and ran straight home. I decided to tell my mom exactly what I saw. Now in my head, I thought she would shrug it off, but that's what she used to do whenever I said, oh, that house is haunted. But seeing the genuine fear in mine and my cousin's eyes, she knew we weren't lying. I sure as hell am not going back anytime soon. Story 2 Hello, paranormal poet. My name is Marcus, and I have never been a believer in the paranormal. I've always thought, in my mind, if there have been so many deaths in this world, where did some of those ghosts that are stuck go? Why haven't I experienced anything? This thought alone 
fueled my belief. But one event would take a turn for the worse and ultimately convince me otherwise. See, the specific event happened in April of this year. I'd gotten the chance to go explore the well-known Yorktown Memorial Hospital. That place is full of incredibly dark history. The energy that was there was undeniably going to be heavy. My mom and I parked and made our way to the front of the building where we met our guide. He was friendly and introduced its dark past. While walking around, some areas I saw made him physically nervous. I saw it in the way he was fidgeting with his hands. His eyes would constantly eyeball the exits if he had to stay and describe what happened in parts of the building. Just very uncomfortable. The place that made him feel it worse? The basement. This is where I had the first of many unexplainable experiences. We stared down this dark, unnerving hallway. Everyone there certainly felt the energy in the room shift. As we walk, I come across this wheelchair in the middle of the hallway. It'll, it was in a corner closer to the wall. When I stopped to look at it from behind me, I felt a very strong poke to my back. Hmm? This was no attention getting poke. This was hard like, hey, what are you doing here? Kind of poke. I turned around and saw no one there. Everyone was up in front. I had happened to slip to the back of the group. This was pretty weird, but I was in no way scared. After the tour was done, my mom told me to tell it firmly to not follow us home. So that's exactly what I did. I stood my ground and demanded whatever spirit poked me in the back to stay and not follow me home. Now I thought I was safe, but in reality, the nightmare was now about to begin. I got home and I was just finishing my dinner. When I got up to begin the dishes, that's when the unthinkable happened. There was this pot that was firmly sitting on the countertop. When I say firmly, I mean there was no reason a pot on a flat surface should move at all. I turned to see this pot get thrown hard by an unseen force off of the counter and onto the floor. After that, I made sure to bless and pray over the house to ensure my mom and I's safety. I can confidently say, I am now a believer in the paranormal. This experience, pardon my French, this scared the living shit out of me. If you have made it to the end of the video, comment down below your favorite story or what gave you chills. Or to make this fun, comment Poultrygeist, as it is now the month of Thanksgiving. Please give this video a like, subscribe, and feel free to clip your favorite moments to share with friends. It will truly help. I love you all, and until next time, farewell poets.